us home if we have really gave our life to him, if we have lived his message. He will also keep you firm to the end. My dear people, this is very important because many unfortunately begin the journey of the faith and many also have collapsed. How many of our brothers and sisters Catholics have left the truth, have left the church? We call them left Catholics. Why? Because of tribulation in the family, because crosses, maybe, you know, a conflict with a priest, a conflict with something that happened in their lives. And the first thing to do is to alienate themselves from the truth. And that's why we need to remain firm to the end, irreproachable on that day, without no blemish, without no nothing that really hinder us from that coming of Jesus to take us home, to be, in, to be perfect. So on that day of our Lord Jesus Christ, always speak about the parousia, about the last day. God is faithful. His word for us is not yes or no. I am with you until the end of time. And he is faithful in that. He is not going to abandon us. He is not going to leave us down. I will not leave you orphans. I am going to prepare a place for you. And then I will come back. And I will take you to myself. So where I am you also may be. And that's why St. Paul, God is faithful. He is not going to, you know, say one thing and then another. And by him we were called to the fellowship with his son. By him, God the Father has given us that fellowship that his son came and with him we can call God our Father. That's the fellowship that we have. And through Jesus Christ, we not only have the fellowship, but also that entry into everlasting life. My dear people, it's not blessing and richness we have. This is our thanksgiving tonight. To thank God for the gift of His Son Jesus, for the gift of the faith, that He remain with us in the world and in the Eucharist. That He can come to us and remind us of the love that the Father has for us. The Father has loved the world that He gave us His Son, who His Son become flesh, so that through Him we can come to the Father. And then, of course, in the journey towards Him, He didn't leave us orphans. He gave us His very blood, His very body and blood, to sustain us on that journey. And that's why, as a nation today, we come together to thank God. If you look around you and really sit down for a few moments and think how many blessings the Lord has given us. Not only the gift of faith, which is the par excellence, the greatest gift, the gift of family. Tomorrow many of you, all of us, are going to sit with our loved ones. And we are going to break bread together. Because they, in that very environment of that family, we are who we are. And that's why we need to strengthen. We need to strengthen the school of love. We need to really enforce the greatness, tightness that we have to have for the family. Uphold the family. The church speaks so loudly and clearly. Don't think our bishop when they speak about married life, and when they speak about family life, and when they speak about the right to life, the church is saying something out of the blue. She is going to the fountain of truth, which is the scripture. Because God in his mind is so in love with the family that he lives in the family of Father, Son, and Spirit. He was born in the family of Nazareth. And when he born us in the faith, he gave us the church as our mother, God our Father. And in fact, we call each other as brothers and sisters. The idea of family is not something that we create. It is the, as we say, the very nature of what God himself intends for us. And that's why we need to strengthen those ties of the family. Because let's face it, every good thing that we have, whether respect, love, everything that we have, and everything that we give, we receive it from that very nuclear, which you call the church, the church in Vatican Council, call it domestic church. From there, around the table, we share the story of the family. We share the same food. It's not what we do at the altar. But how can we understand what takes place here if we 
don't think, take, understand what takes place in the family. My dear people, we thank God for that gift of the family. Do I, are we all proud of our families? Sometimes, you know, we are a little bit, you know, as we say, you know, turned off. But they are our blood. And they are the ones who are going to be there for us. And we hope and pray that what we have given them, they in return they will give. Because that was the society needs. A family which is the backbone, the back, backbone of, the, of the society and the church. We thank God for all the blessings of food. If you go Friday nights around our town and around all America, you see bags and bags and bags of food thrown out. And there are people who are hungry. And we don't have enough, more than enough. How many times, you know, we thank God for the clothes we have. You know, when I open my closet and I see that I have five shirts, I have six pants, and I open the drawer and I have this and this and this and I want to mention, comparing where I come from, I used to have one pair of shoes. My dear people, we are very grateful and thankful for what God has prepared for us. And that's why my heart really aches sometimes when I see the indifference in this uh, act, of, act of thanksgiving. I see on one level, our people are very much, very much uh, great. You ask for food, you ask for things, and you have it. And that is something that you know is the beginning. But we need to go beyond that. We need to go beyond that because we know that thanksgiving means that we have to look at each other and say thank you. And many times we fail to do that. We fail to do that because we are all women. But we need to understand that God sent this person in my life and he put me in this space and he put me in this time for a reason. And each one of us is helping each other to develop, to become closer to God. And the more we love, the more we care for each other, the more we give to each other and we reach out to each other. That's why I said when a community cares for her sick, when a community cares for her elderly, when a community reaches out to those who are less fortunate, there is Jesus Christ. Because for us, Jesus become power. He who was God become nothing. So that he teach me and all of us that unless we become nothing, we cannot please God. And that is the most important thing to understand in this day of Thanksgiving. We are at the service of one another. I come not to be served, but to serve. He is God. He come to serve me. And then I think that I am the prince you have to do for me. Let's not be contradicted in what we are saying. God loves me much. That become a servant to me. And for my life, and for my eternal life, he hang himself on that cross. So that through his life and death, I can be saved. Let us give thanks to God today. Let us, America, with one voice say thank you, God, for all the blessings you bestowed on this nation. You gave us freedom. You gave us everything that we need. Let's take one example. The freedom of election. How many countries they don't have that? But we have the freedom of speech. The freedom of election we want. The freedom of doing, you know, what we, what we dream. If we really put our heads to because this is a country of opportunities. It's a country that allows you to do so if you wish to do so. And then this country always teaches us that although we come from many parts of the world, we become one. One so that each one of us can want to understand that in this oneness, we become one nation. Eh? And thank God for that. That's another blessing. That although we are 50 states, we remain one, the United States of America. Look at Russia, how she is divided. Look at other parts of the world. Look at all other people who divide themselves. God bless us, and we're going to bless ourselves by coming to understand that God loves us much, and in return, He wants us to love Him. In the service, we give to one another.